Hello everyone, I'm Alex the Unquotable. Welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That. Today I'm talking about a Netflix series that I found, that I watched very quickly, that isn't the Dragon Prince. This is The New Legends of Monkey. Based on the journey to the West novels, the new Legends of Monkey, for which I will just call Monkey because it's extremely more easy to say that. Easier, I should say. Based on the journey to the West novels, the new Legends of Monkey, which I shall just call Journey to the West, the ne Netflix show, or the new Legends of Monkey, because I don't know, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, is an Australian made Netflix series spanning about 10 episodes, 25 minutes each, which parallel the story of Journey to the West, but with a few major changes. Well, minor and major. If you don't know what the Journey to the West novels are, allow me to exp allow me to expand upon it for you. The Journey to the West is one of the classic Chinese stories, and it spans all three of its religions and focuses on the character of Sun Wukong, the mischievous monkey king. He's a major classical Asian icon, much like Robin Hood is to the West, and he has appeared multiple times throughout media. For instance, he is the inspiration for Goku in Dragon Ball. The original Journey to the West novels follow Song Wukong, the Monkey King, and the monk Tripitaka as they are charged by Buddha to go and collect sacred scrolls from Thunderclap Monastery, and then bring them back to Tripitaka's hometown. Where apparently these and apparently these scriptures are amazing because they have the ability to make even the most sinful a person less sinful. They are joined by the two demon slash gods looking for redemption, Pigsy and Sandy as well as a horse which is secretly a dragon. I know, sounds pretty cool. And from there on, the novel is very much a monster of the week. Every time they go down the path, they run to a new monster which they have to fight and then get past in order to continue on their journey to the west. The overall book itself is about 2,000 pages, so you can tell there's a lot of source material to work with. The thing is though, in this series, it's very much different. In this version of the story, Sun Wukong isn't exactly a monkey. If anything, he's just called monkey. He doesn't have the monkey tail, and he seems to lack a few of his powers. For instance, the ability to fly in a cloud, which is directly established. A young monk, Tripitaka, is charged with trying to find the illustrious Monkey King and collect the sacred scrolls and take them back to the West. Now, the Netflix series doesn't follow this story exactly the same. Some things are very much correct. For instance, that both Pigsy and Sandy are join the team later. Song Wukong is trapped underneath a mountain for 500 years, and it's Tripitaka is the one who saves him. But with some notable differences. In the Netflix series, after Monkey's imprisonment, 500 years have passed, all the gods have vanished or been defeated, and the demons now rule the earth. But there is a small group of humans and gods called the Resistance who are trying to fight against them. This is where we meet Tripitaka, who is a young girl who works for the Scholar. Now, Tripitaka is supposed to be this other monk who came to see the Scholar and was going on a mission to try and find the Monkey King, because the Scholar has a crown, and once the crown is placed on Monkey's head, he will be free of his curse underneath the mountain. But the Scholar, the monk, and a few other warriors get killed by some demons, so the young girl becomes the new Tripitaka. She goes and she frees Monkey, and also spends a bit of time running around a city which is run by a terrifyingly large princess demon. But along the way, Tripitaka not only gains Monkey's trust, besides the fact that he is this trickster who wants nothing to do with Tripitaka in the first few episodes, but we also meet Sandy, who's living in the sewers of the city, who's also been waiting on Tripitaka. We also meet Pigsy, who is like a servant slash lover to the princess demon, and he also joins the group after figuring out that, yeah, this isn't really the life for him. And so the four escape the city, and they go on the journey to the west, I guess you could say. So after all that, they team up, and they go off to look for the sacred scrolls that Monkey stole and hid around the world from the Thunderclap Monastery. The reason for this is that this used to be the home of the gods, something bad happened that we're not supposed to know about and I won't spoil, and they basically need to find all these sacred scrolls and scriptures, and with all seven of them together, I believe it's seven, I might be wrong, they can then vanquish all the demons, and everything can be good and great again. So, yeah, it's a pretty good series. And yes, there are some very notable differences. For instance, Tripitaka is a girl, the scrolls are the... For instance, Tripitaka is a girl, 
the scriptures have more of a demon vanquishing power and there's this whole thing that demons now rule the world and the gods have no power. Which isn't exactly right. In the original novel, demons are prevalent everywhere, but the gods are just as powerful. In fact, there's kind of an ongoing power struggle between the gods and the demons in terms of power ability. You know, every so often you get a cocky demon who says that a god's not up to his standards and then the god just comes down and smites them appropriately in their power state fashion. Really, it is a lot like a Dragon Ball Z episode, you know, lots of yelling, fighting, and this isn't my final form! But I have to say, I really love Journey to the West. It became one of my favorite mythological tales from Asia in the past few years, and I love Sung Wukong. He has to be one of my favorite mythological characters. Besides you, Odysseus, you have a special place in my heart. Stay strong, buddy. And I have to say, these notable differences aren't that distracting. If anything, that makes it a bit more compelling. If anything, I found this to be a good modern interpretation of the books. A good modern update, if you will. In the books, it really is Sun Wukong who shines through in most of the story. I mean, Pixie is a layabout. He's lazy. He's a glutton. Tripitaka is the high ground moral white knight, except he's less of a knight because he's more of a damsel because four or five times he gets captured by the monsters they run into. Sandy doesn't really do that much. I mean, he is kind of this moral high ground guy as well. He's kind of there to make sure that Pigsy does his job, kind of there for support, but he doesn't have a whole lot of characterization. And the horse is a dragon. That's pretty much it. And so they forgo the dragon horse. Appropriate, I think, considering the budget that they must have had to work with here. And it shows. The sets and the effects that they could work with in the story, although they're a bit cheap looking, are beautiful. The sets that they've made and the towns and environments they've created are amazing to look at. It's like watching the Musketeer BBC series. You can tell a lot of this is done in studio, and the stuff that isn't done in studio is done in lush forests that's very reminiscent of ancient Chinese tales, and it looks astounding and beautiful. Not to mention, I'm very proud of the ethnic cast they put into this. Three out of the four main casts are all of ethnic backgrounds, and the one person who is white is French, and she basically, it comes off as a totally different character. Most of the cast is in fact played by either eight people of Asian descent, Kiwi, Torres Strait Islander, or Maori descent. And it's really a breath of fresh air, and it works really well. Most of the demon characters are played by white people in illustrious and complex makeup, and they look really good. They really play the part really well. But it's an overall a really good story. I really enjoy it, and the characters are so enjoyable. I mean, yes, Monkey is still a trickster. He still thinks he can do everything on his own, he doesn't really need help. But in this, he becomes a lot more trustworthy of everyone. In the books, he does the same, but doesn't read quite as over as well. In the story, it's amazing to see him think of others, and think of others' well-being. Yeah. You can see him have heartbreak when Tripitaka leaves the group for a little while. You can see his absolute obliviousness when he finds out that Tripitaka is a girl. You can tell that this is a really good character, and it shines through for the other ones as well. Tripitaka being a girl and having to hide her gender Mulan style in order to fulfill the prophecy of Tripitaka is also extremely refreshing. I mean, it makes her complex. She doesn't know much about her past. She learns to know who her family is before she was orphaned and lived with the scholar. She wants to prove herself and doesn't feel like she's worthy to be there because she's not the real Tripitaka, despite the fact that this group clearly needs her. And the other two characters are amazing as well. I mean, yes, Pixie is a glutton and still a bit of a slob. He's still a layab. He's still a bit of a layabout as well. But it's played more for comedy more than, oh, this is a bad thing. He's a bad person. This is a bad character. I mean, there's a part where Monkey is being used as bait, and Pixie's gonna kill Steel from behind a tree. And Pixie falls asleep when the demon finds Sung Wu Kong and knocks himself out again with his rake. Not to mention, he's just such a lovable character. When Tripitaka comes back to the group. He gives her a big hug in order to welcome her back. And it's also this kind of thought that Pixie isn't quite as dumb as you think he is. It's kind of insinuated that he built this prison for gods that only gods can create. That's some pretty high level stuff. And then you have Sandy. And Sandy is... Sandy is kind of like a minor Sung Wukong. You can tell that she's a powerhouse. You can tell that she has these amazing powers. She just doesn't use them. She can be a bit of a ditz, and she can be a bit out there. She's a little bit like Luna Lovegood, a bit of an airhead. But she's also incredibly wise. She's incredibly moral. If anything, she's kind of the moral compass for the group, more than Tripitaka is. Whenever they have a bit of a struggle, she offers her opinion, and usually it's the right one. And they're just really lovable to watch. I have to say, I've seen 
a few interpretations of the Journey to the West story. I've seen a cartoon, and I've seen the Hong Kong production that was released. I've seen the first two of the Hong Kong production, The Monkey King and the second, and the second movie, which I'm pretty sure is called The Monkey King 2. And that's a great production as well. I recommend having a look at it. That one's more cinematic though, while this one is more episodic. And while it doesn't stick directly to the story of The Journey to the West, it's still very good and very enjoyable. I'm excited to see what happens next. In the last few episodes of the series, they name drop the White Bone Demon. And I love the White Bone Demon from the book. It's one of the, my, the best characters. And I really can't wait to see what else they do with this story, how the world expands. And I really hope that this Australian company can keep making these stories. It's a great action series, it's a great drama series, and not to mention it's only 10 episodes long, which means that for a binger, it's just a quick watch. I ra highly recommend this um, TV series. Now I'm gonna reserve judgment until the series is completed. That is if it's renewed. If it isn't renewed, then I'll do a little, I'll do my little rating in another video once I get word that they're not gonna make any more of this series. But keep an eye out for it. It's supposed to drop on international Netflix soon, and it's a very good story and I highly recommend it. Anyway, I'm Alex the Unquotable. Like and subscribe to the Unquotables. Leave a comment down below for things that you want us to have a look at. Like and share our videos. Help get the word of the Unquotables out there. And I will see you all in the next video for Anime Month! <laughs>